Hello, welcome back to Balanced Three-Phase Circuits. In this lesson, we're going to talk about three-phase voltage sources uh, in the delta and the Y arrangement. So basically, we're going to be talking about generators. How, how are these balanced three-phase sets of voltages actually created? And how do we model them in circuits? Now, I know <clears throat> that most of you guys want to just solve your circuits. You know, you want to get to your three-phase circuits and just solve them so you, can, so you can do well in the test. And I want to get there, too. But the problem is if we jump too far ahead too fast, then I'm going to lose you in some areas and it's going to seem hard when it's not. So let's just take a second to talk about the source part of this thing. How are sources created? How do they work? What is a Y source and what is a delta source? And not only just what are they shaped like, like how are they connected? How do they actually work? So that whenever you see a problem down the road that looks really complicated with three phases, then you'll in your mind have this lesson in the back of your head to know that, hey, that source really is, is this, what we're about to draw. And that load is really like this. And so then the problems that will come later down the road will be simpler. So the first thing I want to do, my roadmap here, is I want to explain what a, uh, a basic three-phase voltage source looks like. And we're going to first talk about the Y configuration. You'll find that there's Y and there's delta. It's just two different ways of wiring up three-phase circuit, essentially. All right. So I hope I don't mangle this <clears throat> drawing because it's kind of a complicated looking drawing. Um, what we want to do is look at a basic three-phase, and you might see it written as three-phase, voltage source generator. And when I say a voltage source, these three-phase sources are typically not, you know, something in a consumer device that's generating three-phase power. We're talking about a power plant, or we're talking about a large generator in a large piece of machinery that's driven by something like driven by steam or something, rotating something, and it's generating three phases. That's what I'm talking about by a generator, a, re a real... Um, you know, or you could have a, you could have a residential generator that generates three-phase power, but I'm just saying it's typically not going to be a small little device that sits on the counter in your kitchen, is what I'm trying to say, <clears throat> because they're more complicated to build. They have more windings. Everything's more complicated, but they're more efficient in a lot of ways, which we've already talked about. All right, now the first thing I want to draw, I'm going to attempt to use a couple of different colors uh, because I think it'll be helpful. The first thing I'm going to draw is you have a rotating something rotating in the center. So what I want to draw is draw kind of a small little core here. Could be a piece of iron or something like this. And this guy has wound around it a coil of wire. Many hundreds, maybe even many thousands of turns. I'm representing it with a tiny little coil like this. And this is going to basically form an electromagnet. Remember if you take a nail and you wrap a wire around it and you put a current through it, and you guys are all you know, studying electronics, you probably know about this or heard about it or played with it as a kid. The magnetic field that's generated by that electric current gets, uh, it lines up the atoms in the, in the nail or the metal, and that which amplifies and, cr and makes a stronger field, right? It concentrates a magnetic field flux inside of that um, iron or whatever it is in the middle. So here we have a metallic conductor in the center. Whatever it's made out of doesn't matter as long as it's magnetic. We wind something around it and we put a current through it and that generates a strong magnetic field. So it basically creates an electromagnet in the center. Now this device, we create it so that it can spin on a shaft. That's what the arrows mean. This thing can go one, 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 back and forth like this. Now, typically, this will be powered by steam or, you know, some other uh, type of, you know, could be wind, could be whatever. But it's going to be pushed by some something external, and the magnetic field kind of comes out, and the, they create these big loops. So as this thing rotates, the magnetic field is rotating with the thing because it's all connected together, right? So let me write a couple things down. So this is. Um, yeah, let's use this color. This guy here is an electromagnet. Electromagnet. Uh, and I've already said it rotates by gas turbine or whatever. All right, now what we have, really what makes this thing work, is around the periphery of this rotating structure, we have three additional coils that are going to end up forming the three phases of our, three, our balanced three-phase set. So we have a stationary guy up here. Uh, let me make this, a, this one a little bit bigger, because typically they are a little bit bigger. So this guy will come down here. He's a little bit bigger. Let's do it like that. So there's a guy like this. And let me see if I can balance it and make it, oh, let's do it, yeah, more like this. Here's another one right there. And then here's another one right here. Not going to be perfect. That's okay. doesn't matter. Now, the crucial thing to remember is that this guy is separated by this guy by 120 degrees. This guy is separated by this guy by 120